Kyle says itself. <laughs> this was a year ago. What is up, Humanoid Nation? Today's video we're reacting to is by a YouTube channel, Wrestling Gifts, Gifts, whatever. I call it Gifts. Prime Vince McMahon is insane. This was a year ago. So now that we know all that's happening with the whole Janelle Grant thing and John Laurinaitis thing and him loving to uh, shit everywhere and having sex toys named out of wrestlers. Let's see how insane this man is in his prime. <laughs> I would say he was insane now, but all the other shit he's done. All right. So come with me on this adventure. Let's do this. Yo, what's up, guys? It's your boy, Pab. And before we get started, I'm happy to announce that today's video is brought to you by DraftKings. As we all know, it's going down this weekend in it. I'm sorry, guy, but DraftKings, I tried. Eh, not a big fan of DraftKings, but good for you. Make your money. Make your money. From the 80s to the mid 90s, Vince McMahon was a constant presence on WWE television. He would always appear doing interviews and commentary and was the voice of the company, and yet most viewers had no idea he was also the owner of the company. But by If you're stupid, you didn't know he was the owner of the company. I'm just saying, you gotta be really, really dumb to not know that he was wasn't the owner. 1999 that all changed. Everyone knew he was the owner of the company and he was full-fledged the most evil character in wrestling. He was 54 years old and went from looking like this to looking like this. He was so jacked, he was so oily, it didn't make any sense and the Mr. McMahon character was out in full force. In 1999 alone, Vince was running around, going through tables, falling off steel cages, winning the Royal Rumble, arranging his daughter to be kidnapped and married by The Undertaker. He hated Austin so much that he even got his son involved in the beef and was having handicapped ladder matches and by the end of the year, he was also the WWE Champion. What a lifestyle. All of that was already insane, but the thing about Mr. McMahon was the more he was on television, the older he got, the more mental this guy got. See, not uh, in the on camera, the more mental he got, especially outside the ring. I'm just there's gonna be a lot of Janelle Grant jokes today. Today, people, keep up. <laughs> in 2000, Mr. McMahon was iconic, right? They were special times. But the thing is, as the years went by, Vince was out here evolving like a Pokemon. Just when you thought Vince was wilding, he went further and further and crazier and crazier. Yes. And there are four years in the 2000s that are perfect examples of this. We begin in 2001, the beginning of Prime Mr. McMahon. So as 2001 began, Vince had already told Linda that he wanted a divorce. He broke Linda's heart so badly that she actually had a mental breakdown and needed to be placed in a mental institution. But every time Stephanie would beg him, he would just kind of be like, sounds like a personal problem to me. So he has his wife sent to a mental institution. He just Would this be the face? Of him when he's like banging Janelle from behind and thinking about what toys to use. Like, I want to smash my NWO in there. Come on, Janelle. Owns his daughter, and to really kickstart his midlife crisis, he begins to have an affair with Trish Stratus. And it's like, okay, that's fine. You know, doesn't every 50 year old man do that? Well, yeah. But he goes above and beyond as is tradition for the Big Mac Man. Because eventually he starts taking Trish to Linda to flaunt her and then he finds out that his wife, Linda McMahon, is in a comatose state. Meaning that she's in a state of deep unconsciousness comatose, for a sir. prolonged comatose. or indefinite period. So yo, this maniac takes Linda who is in a wheelchair, basically unconscious and does- This is basically Linda McMahon in just her regular acting because she can't act and this is basically regular Linda McMahon. She was being herself. This in front of her, just going crazy, tongue and mouth and everything, and Linda is just there, his real life wife, just being forced to watch this, and it just gets worse and worse. Hey, Linda, you wanna watch me fuck Jenna? <laughs> I am so sorry. <laughs> this video is gonna make me. It's gonna. Oh god, I'm going straight down with this video, but. Uh, uh, besides the Janelle stuff, every other person, and just, yeah. 
Vince was just out here for the first time showing us how wild he can truly be and this all leads to Wrestlemania 17. Father versus son, his son Shane McMahon comes back for revenge for his mother and he proceeds to just clap his dad in a classic match. Vince basically dies in this match, Linda finally wakes up and stands From up the grave. to him and you're like damn okay Vince finally got what was coming to him. You know it came crashing down and it definitely hurt inside, he got embarrassed on the grandest stage of them all and now maybe, just maybe, he might go back to normal right? Maybe Maybe he can no. finally relax, just be the boss, do his thing, just go back to normal. But no, <laughs> no, 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 because by the end of the year, he's in the ring having men kiss his ass on live television. Bro, what the f- 2001- Exact same thing I said when that happened. What the fuck, bro? What the fuck? Having I mean, William Regal, Marty Jannetty, and a bunch of other people. And that one pro, he goes like, to Sean. I went over the weekend and got myself an Ashel where they moved my bum bum. Looking back on that now, I was like, was that? <laughs> no. Oh, God, I'm not even in. <laughs> Vince was an evil, evil monster just pushing the boundaries of what anyone would ever expect to see on a wrestling show. But the thing was, this was just the beginning. See, if you thought 2001 Vince was wild, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you 2003 Mr. McMahon. The year that Vince had beef with Hulk Hogan, the year he wanted to kill Hulkamania, the year he stabbed Hulk Hogan with a pen and then signed the contract in his blood. What a special year in the life of Vince McMahon this was. So in 03, Vince goes to WrestleMania jacked and oilier than ever, has a match with Hogan in where for some reason he jumps off a ladder through an announce table because apparently he's Jeff Hardy now and then goes full horror movie mode hey janelle you ready for some fucking you may not be laughing but i'm laughing i'm having a great time here god damn I... <laughs> cancel humanoid cancel humanoid for this iconic scene all in one match but the problem was he lost that match to hogan and this was the worst thing that could have ever happened to this man because this is when he truly lost all of his marbles and i think a lot of people forgot how insane 2003 mr mcmahon truly was so first he fires hogan and tells him you're never allowed back here and finally vince is happy mr He's america he doesn't have to worry about hogan anymore but the problem was the next week mr america made his wwe debut and for some reason nobody knows why to this day vince had had gone so crazy by then he was so delusional that for some reason he thought mr america was hulk hogan so he makes it his personal vendetta to embarrass mr america and prove to the world that he's hulk hogan so he ends up taking a lie detector test with mr oh i love this segment straight from the simpsons like i was looking at sears catalog <laughs> it's like oh god i'm gonna be home ogling i fucked that joke up go watch mo and simpsons sorry I totally screwed, screwed that joke up. Mr. America to prove he's Hogan, but nah, according to the lie detector test, Mr. America isn't Hogan, and instead, well, we, we find this out. I am no pervert. You sure about that? <laughs> and this just drives Vince crazier and crazier. So Mr. America ends up befriending a 20-year-old kid named Zach Gowan, who only has one leg, the poor kid had lost his leg at the age of 8 years old due to cancer, but Vince sees this and he makes it his mission to destroy this poor kid's life. The kid already I like the storyline. It was a great storyline. too many. So first he challenges the kid to an arm wrestling match, right? And that's fine, that's normal. Until you see Vince and, and I'm telling you he was even more jacked and oilier than ever. So he starts losing the arm wrestling match and he ends up kicking the kid in the one leg that he does have, makes him leave the ring and then starts mocking his <laughs> limp. But yo, that was just the beginning because every week Vince would basically torture this poor kid every single week, at least once a week and twice when there was a pay-per-view. This 58 year old man was destroying this one legged kid's life. Literally, for no reason, this poor kid didn't do anything, didn't bother anyone, but Vince was just so cracked out at this point, he just hated him. So hey, Zach, can I have your mom's number? No? Well, you're fired. No, that never happened, but. It would have been something. So Brock Lesnar ends up breaking the kid's other leg, and now Zach Gowan, who has no legs at this point, he is tied to a wheelchair, his mouth is covered, and Vince McMahon ends up ordering Brock Lesnar 
to push him down the stairs and this ends up becoming the greatest day of his life when Vince finally conquered the one-legged 20-year-old. So now, it's late 2003, right? Vince has bought WCW, Austin is retired, Hogan is gone, the one-legged kid has no legs now, he has Sable as a side beast, life is good, life is set, he's a billionaire, he can finally relax and chill and just do his own thing. But nah, instead he has to go beef his Stephanie own daughter on McMahon. the high pay per view. Yes, yes, this was a real match. A real. You don't remember like the storyline? I hated the storyline when it first happened because I was like, "This is stupid." But looking back on it, it was pretty awesome. But there was a storyline where when Vince, I mean, not Vince, Stephanie was pregnant, and Vince pitched the idea of saying, "Hey, what if I was a father?" And Stephanie, even Stephanie, would say, "Like, no, we're not doing that." What if your brother was the father? No, dad. Now stop. <laughs> Go be a sexual deviant somewhere else. <laughs> Real match that happened on pay-per-view. I, I would show clips, but I'm not trying to get demonetized. And it wasn't just a normal match. No, why would we keep it a normal match? They made it an I quit match. Vince McMahon versus Stephanie McMahon. No Mercy 03. An I quit match. And just to make it even better, they had Linda. So his wife and Stephanie's mom watching at ringside enjoying this five-star class. And this was the day before Stephanie's wedding too. And Linda said, do not beat her up too much for her wedding or I will kill you. She didn't say that, but I'm pretty sure she did. Uh, but Stephanie McMahon, god damn, doing this a day before her wedding. God damn! masterpiece like yo it, it doesn't make any sense there is nothing that vince wouldn't do there is nothing he wouldn't say and this just shows that definitely there is nobody safe from the mac man at the end of the nobody is safe from the mcmahon one year later besides janelle grant everybody else that hasn't come forward because there's a bunch of others like allegedly allegedly Say this was still the owner of the company. This was the same guy that was in charge of a billion dollar company who answered the stakeholders, who was the boss, and just happened to be doing this at the exact same time. He could do whatever he wanted in his own company on his own. And now he's no longer part of his own company. They're trying to phase him out. Yeah? One year later, on television show, and this was the stuff that he wanted to do. <laughs> nah, yo, two. Is it me or does? I'm so glad he got rid of his butt chin right here, cause this hole in his chin got rid of it later on. But god damn. 2003 Vince on SmackDown was a true menace. But fast forward to 2005, okay? O3 was done. It came, it went. He had his beefs, did his thing. It's gone. By 2005, Vince had finally calmed down a bit, to be honest. He was finally kind of normal now, and if anything, when he came out on TV, he wasn't really the evil boss. If anything, he was getting cheered by most of the fans. He was at this stage of his career where he can just be the boss, get some cheers and relax, and just settle down. Maybe 2001 and 2003 Vince was the past now. I mean, listen, by now, he was 60 years God. old, right? It, it makes sense. He had just tore both of his quads on live pay-per-view. Maybe it's time to just take it easy right off into the sunset you had your fun you know respect nope gotta beef god in 2006 yo it, it doesn't make any sense i swear to god it makes no sense vince has any minor inconvenience in life just one thing doesn't go his way this man just goes a thousand times harder see in 99 and harder and loses all his bowels at the same time and shits on someone along with somebody else like i said there's gonna be a lot of this in this episode. <laughs> Keep up. 2000, Vince was pretty normal because everything was going well, right? Well, the XFL fails in 2001. He ends up losing $30 million plus. Time to start a club, pal. WrestleMania 19 in 2003 does a horrible buy rate. More people bought the Royal Rumble that year than WrestleMania. Well, time to beat up a one-legged kid, pal. And then he tears both of his quads on live pay-per-view in 2005. A total freak accident. It's an accident. It happens. You can't control it. It's fine, right? Whatever. Time to beef God, pal. Yo, that was Vince in the Ruthless Aggression era. And in 2006, I, I don't even know how to explain this. So we had beef with HBK. He had beef with Shawn Michaels, but HBK didn't have a partner, and Vince really wanted to have a match. You know, he just really wanted to have one, 
and he couldn't make it a three on one match. No, that that's unfair. So being the kind, generous man that Vince is, he gave Shawn Michaels the greatest tag team partner they could possibly find. A and look how nice Vince was. He even gave they used the uh, Ernest Cat Miller uh, song, "Funky's on a Row." Wait, yeah, Ernest Cat Miller used it first when he first came to WWE. And God had it. And Brodus Clay. Give him a special entrance and everything. But at the end of the day, even that wasn't enough to stop the Big Mac man. So for the rest of humanity, as long the world exists, as long as the universe exists, as long as wrestling is a thing, in the wrestling history books, it will forever say this. Nah man, life, life is just a simulation. Nothing, I mean absolutely nothing is off limits for Vince. I mean, do I even have to explain this picture over here? Nope. So that was 06, we all know what it right? Means. How, how could Vince ever top this? He tweaked in 01, he tweaked in 03, 06. How could he top this? Well, he somehow found a way in 07. So at WrestleMania 23 in 2007, Vince was in the middle of the ring. He lost his match and in front of 80,000 people, he got embarrassed and humiliated. He's crying, he's depressed, he has shaving cream everywhere. And worst of all, he was bald. He was left looking like this and Vince McMahon was down so bad. You know, this is Vince McMahon. This is the Big Mac man. He can't be like this. He can't be depressed. He Insert do-rag Vince McMahon. Probably the best character do-rag Vince McMahon and he wins the ECW title and no one gave a shit. W was dead at this point. He needed to get his swagger back. He needed to get his mojo back and he needed to be the man once again. So what does he do? Well, he starts wearing a do-rag and becomes ECW champion and starts walking around thinking he's 2003 50 Cent. For some reason in 2007, <laughs> Vince McMahon- I completely forgot he did a different walk as that. And put on a do-rag, got superpowers, and, and the craziest part is, this is the happiest Miss McMahon I have ever seen in my life on television. Yo, it turns out it wasn't the millions of dollars, it wasn't being the feds in court, it wasn't Trish, it wasn't Sable or his little club that he had on the side. All he needed to be happy in life was a do-rag and the ECW championship. And a non-disclosure agreement that he refused to pay out after. Like, how do you do that? I'm not, I'm not giving him props for that. I'm just saying, like, you're telling a woman not to say or tell anything and you're paying them. And then you stop paying her after all this? No wonder she uh, called you out. I'm, I'm saying it's a wrong thing, but goddamn, pay people. <laughs> What they owe. Oh god. Cancel humanoid. Yo, he would just go around and be the biggest troll. The way he would walk, the way he would talk, the way he would dress. I, I mean, yo, just look at this. This was a fit that would make Cameron jealous. Nah, yo, 07 Durek Vince was just that guy. Excuse me while I rip this out. Too easy of a joke. He would say whatever he wanted, do whatever he wanted. He would go onto ECW and just troll everyone. One time in the ring are all these former ECW champions, you know, these legends of the business, legends of the company, and RVD goes like, you're making a mockery of the ECW championship. And Vince just goes like, you're damn right I am. This was like the evil version of Prison Mike come to life. Durag Vince was in the cut. He had his own special handshakes now. He'd be doing some weird things with his hands, throwing up gang signs. This man loved the ECW championship and his Durag more than he loved anything. He loved his Durag and his championship more than he loved his own son. For <laughs> two months, Durag Vince was just just a meme. I don't know how else to describe it. He was that was two months? I thought so it was more than that. The championship more than he loved anything. So when he lost that belt he was so depressed he was so sad that the man forgot how to talk he basically became linda mcmahon in 2001 so i, I guess karma is real this man forgot how to talk and he would just sit there in his rocking chair just missing and crying you think he'll pull a jimmy snooker not the nancy argentino stuff but him getting out pretending to get alzheimer's and I don't know. Do you think Vince McMahon be the type of guy who goes to court over to Joe Grant lawsuit thing and doctors will say like, this man has Alzheimer's. He can't remember anything, so he can't be fit for court. Rich people, they can do anything. But I'm just saying, he got away with it all these years. What if he did that one final thing if this goes to court? I'm just saying. 
can fake the whole Alzheimer's, get his own doctors, that stuff. Or get a doctor and pay him, who knows. <sighs> Thinking about his ECW championship, this man was so depressed, he was down so bad that he faked his own death. I don't think anyone will ever forget being a kid and turning on Raw and watching. Or and Paul London smiling. Nah, man, I I'm done. I, I can't. Mr. McMahon, j just insane. That, that is all I can say. Prime Mr. McMahon is without a doubt the most insane, the craziest, just the most just mental character we have ever seen in wrestling. And, and of course, let's be real. Is it really a character? No, no, not at all. But Vince in those four years, in my opinion, in 01, 03, 06, and 07, we will never, ever see a character like that ever again. And honestly, maybe for, for good reason. How was this even allowed? You say four years, 01, 03, 06, and 07? I get what you're trying to say, but that wasn't four years. That was more than that, but I understand what you're trying to say. In the first place. Yo, this was such a crazy time to grow up, right? Like, we were kids, and we would tune in to watch wrestling, and this was a part of the presentation. This was the product. Like, this was normal. Every now and then, Vince would just come back, and he became the wild, wild west. He would do whatever he wanted, say whatever he wanted. And, yo, you knew when Vince was on TV and you were a kid, you were probably watching something that you shouldn't be watching. But once upon a time... This was normal. Yo, mm -hmm. I swear, even though we ran down this, we saw the pictures, we saw the clips and everything, we talked about it, this still feels so surreal. Prime Mr. McMahon was, was just insane. That is the best way to put it. What a time it was to be alive. In the comments down below, let me know your personal wildest memory of Vince McMahon when you were watching back in the day. What was the one moment that just made your jaw go on the floor and you were just there like, yo, whoa, 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 what is going on? But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed. It's your boy Pav, aka Wrestling Gifts. I'll catch you guys on the next one soon. Until then, take it easy, take care, and I'll see you guys later. So the wildest moments for Vince McMahon for me back in the day, like I'm not gonna do the Janelle Grant jokes yet uh but yeah back then when my jaw dropped when he goes like i'm the genetic jackhammer life sucks and then you die it was me austin it was me all along even though everybody shits on it it's still a great memory for me it was amazing him uh falling off the steel him, him being thrown off the steel cage by stone cold uh uh <laughs> A, a Raw reunion show where Stone Cold came out and Vince McMahon said like, oh, Steve, I'm in a retirement home now. We can't do this. Uh, too many to name, but let's see what the comments are. The, oh, yeah, they're all of one year ago, so this is before Janelle Grant. But, yeah, Brian Vince McMahon is insane. Is insane. Who knows what's going to happen to him now? This whole Janelle Grant situation, Jesus Christ. Yeah, Janelle should not have gone through it for any of that, but yeah. I don't know what else to say, but I'm going to leave it like that. Anyway, take it easy, Humanoid Nation. Humanoid out. Bye! Pasito a pasito, suave, suavecito.